Morning ladies. Morning Bruno. Oh, we've got some eggs. One of those eggs looks green and the other one looks white. And there's an egg on the ground down here too, somewhere. There. I can see I'm going to have to close those boxes and make them a bit more, uh, I don't know, secure. Morning Po. Rain, rain and rain. So I put this here so it would run off into the pond. As you can see it's actually overflowing. But everything's wet anyway. And the watercress loves it. This stuff is just growing in the rain. We've had like 12 days now of rain. This bloke's just turned up. He's from the police. He's to check Dayla's firearms license. Dayla's just applied for a firearms license. Still haven't quite worked out how the feeder goes. I'll get it. And we've got a green and a white. That'll do. Calm down. Calm down, Poe. Homemade pea smells good. Yeah, with, with uh, relish on top. Smoko with Herb! I'm back. He's back. I'm back. <laughs> and, so, I came back. and suddenly he's talking in an American accent. That's right. <laughs> God damn, where was I? <laughs> I was in America. Where the hell did that come from? We're talking uh, about. Well, you know, I'm back. He's back. <laughs> we're, we're, I've got a coffee, uh, Chloe's Beans, and what are you drinking, bro? Well, I'm drinking a cup of tea. Okay. Usual, smoke out. So, bro, tell us what's been going on because everyone's been asking, where's Ab? Well, I've been out there <clears throat> swinging the hammer. I had a um, old roof job to do on an old place, about 140 years old or something, in Nelson. Jeez, that's nearly as old as you. That's right. Yeah, it looked better. It was in better condition. Ah, uh, you had a pretty good <laughs> neck, mate. So that was um, good fun. Needed a little bit of love. Um, there'd been a bit of dodgy stuff done in the past, uh, which we had to remedy, which was always a good thing. Nice, warm, fuzzy feeling for the owners to know that the uh, place... Mm. Is waterproof and stronger and upgraded and all that. And then um, there was a daycare centre. They uh, needed to have some big poles put in the ground for a large shade sail that used to hang down oh, okay. over the kids. Where was that, bro? That was in Mapua, the Mapua Hardy Kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right so, next yeah, and it's kind of funny, you know, in this game you'll do quotes and, and there's a little thing that says they're valid for 60 days. It's meaningless to people, you know, but that's all right. <laughs> but I think I did that quote in February and they just waited till it got sunny again. And then it's run by a mob, I probably maybe shouldn't say too much about it, but it's controlled by someone in Auckland, you yeah. know, who doesn't quite understand, I guess, how much sun's beaming down on the kids, you mm. know. And um, so the quote had been sitting there, obviously, pre-COVID, been sitting there for quite a while, and then they decided about a, oh, five weeks ago or whatever to go ahead with it now. You yeah, know? right. So... I tried to get that up as quick as I could too, because the kids are all out there, and the last thing they need to be doing is burning to a frazzle, you know. So, yeah, no, absolutely. <clears throat> that sun's yeah. lethal in New Zealand, eh? Yeah. It is, and that was a bit of a logistical nightmare because the whole property had been built out with sand pits and and stuff like that. So it was a bit about how to get a leapfrog, leapfrog, a digger into the middle of the job so we could do it and crane in the poles and yeah, right. Concrete truck and whether to use a concrete pump or not and all this sort of stuff. And it all had to happen after one o'clock on Friday. Oh man. So it was a late Friday last Friday. So you, you've been working bloody long hours, but are you getting a chance to get on the mountain bike at all? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. your passion and your yeah, love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without two days a week, my left knee doesn't work properly. So it needs to. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's The cartilage is all torn and damaged from the days of downhill racing. So right. it needs to have muscular workout to keep it all aligned. So how hard are you going when you go mountain biking? Oh, I just dawdle up the hill, but because it's a, a normal bike, I have to do it all the way to the top and I go up three times. So right. it's like climbing about, well, what does it say? Furball skids 366 metres. Right. So it's three, three of those climbs, that's 1,000 metres climbing. So you get your heart and lungs going, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's also crucial. Yeah. You know, they need to have a bit of a workout, especially yeah. this is what um, kept me a really good neck through that whole heart operation was the fact that I was fit. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not fit for the sake of being fit, it's just a byproduct of having fun. Yeah. So I've known at least three people. Uh, who um, ride e-bikes and have switched and they've all put on a bit of weight. Oh really? Yeah. They've put on a bit of weight? They've put on a bit of weight, yeah. And they, they ride still good, you know, but they've put on a bit of weight. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, so they can, you know, like you yeah. can. Yeah. So that's um, that's nothing negative or positive or whatever, it doesn't matter, it's your choice, you know, but yeah. e-bikes are cool and if I was commuting on a bike, yeah. like all my German friends who yep. commute with bikes in mm -hmm. Freiburg down there and that, They've all got e-bikes, like, absolutely. You could go to work and not need to have a shower. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah, alone. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how far you have to yeah, go, but you yeah. don't need to have a shower. Well, when I used to work in the bike shop in Cairns, I at one point, I worked there for three years as a mechanic for two days a week and in the last year for one day a Specialized, week. Specialised, was yeah. it? Yeah. Specialised concept yeah. store. Oh, yeah. And so I'd, I could beat most cars from my suburb to work because of the traffic jam going into town. Yep. And then I'd hook onto the Esplanade and ride along the Esplanade where it's just full of good vibes. G'day, g'day, how you going? Ladies with prams, people yeah. jogging, retirees walking. G'day, how you going? It's just like, wow, oh, cool, I'm going to work on a push bike. It was so cool after driving for like 39 bloody years. Yeah. Know? But then I was, had to have a shower, had to hang my, my bike clothes up somewhere to, to let them breathe. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, and then it, yeah. Get back into it and after work and so we had a shower there and had a locker and everything. It was all cool, you know, but you couldn't dream of in Cairns particularly and probably most of Australia at least half the year riding to work without having to have a shower. You know, mountain biking is a whole lifestyle, isn't it? Mm. You know, your whole lifestyle is around mountain biking. Yeah. Arb came to live here because Nelson has some of the best mountain bike tracks in the world, but they, they, they class is what they class as gold rated. Yeah. And right at the top there. And I'm I'm so stoked because he looked an Aussie for years and I missed him. He's a mate, you know, we've been mates forever and as kids and we've been in different countries together and had a lot of fun and it's great he's back and he's also the one that was instrumental in me getting my mountain bike, which currently's got a flat tire. We're gonna go inside and Arb's gonna tell us what he's gonna do to the kitchen before we round up the smoke girl with Arb session. We'll, have a, we'll go in there and have a look at that and uh, be interested to see what he says. We've torn, we've gutted most of it, just going to take a few more wee bits and pieces out like the window and stuff, but most of it's just about ready to start working. It's so a blank I, canvas. The blank <laughs> canvas, I think the floor's going to be the first thing because it's single, so we'll go and check that out. Well, my mate David Vass, he just smashed this place, bro, but now it's up to you. What's happening? Yeah, well, firstly, this beam that's just loosely sitting there. I'll tuck a couple of props under it for oh, a start. I see you have done that, yeah. yep. Okay. One at each end. Oh, I'm yep. just going to connect that to the rest of the thing. This top, The old top plate is what it used to be. I'm going to connect it to that. I've got a shopping list now of a few things. So it's a case of just connecting that stuff together first. So when I'm jacking, it doesn't fall down. Yep. I don't want that <laughs> Then we've got about a 20 mil drop in the corner here. And, and you can see there's quite a bit of sort of mold and stuff's gone on. I've replaced some weatherboards there and all that, so yep. chop that floor out. But we've got a fair amount of, um, we need to get the Sparky in here and get him to just tidy up all this stuff here because it's yep. chaos. And that water, we want to look at how we want to do that with the water as well. We want to bring that in right. in a different sort of format. That's still in a sort of external poly, yep. but we want to put it into something internally to bring it in. Yep. So it's just a good tidy up and repiling this corner here probably about three or four piles there um how would you do that mate um probably chop the floor out yep it's probably just as easy to go from either side there's a concrete slab down there and it's a bit closer if i chop the floor out yeah right it's eh? a good look and um yeah we then ask a question what we're doing with that window we've already got these other two windows made yep and they can bring them out for us pretty soon and um question about that window whether we want to mm -hmm. whether you want a window there or whether we want to change the shape of it all together but that um, lintel also needs a little bit of oh, love does. given to it yeah so yeah, sure does. that's why we'll decide what size we do then I can chop it off and put some studs down there and everything yeah but actually generally the floor I put my level on it lays it's not too bad it's just that corner that's just dropped that corner off. dropped yeah, off okay sort of within 10 mil everywhere else. right yep yeah and then there's a leak up at the bridge here see that leak up the there yeah I wonder where that's coming there's one running all the way down Right. right up from where the ridge capping is. Ah, yeah, you can see it up there, right. Yeah. We need to get onto that. And there's another one that's right in the corner as well, coming out of the internal corner. So we've got two the separate leaks. Yeah, they, yeah, that wasn't really quite supported. When you put these in, you have to put a lot of pearls in. So yeah, so just a good general tidy up for a start. Bring the structure up. So just do the whole structure. I'll spend my time yep. working on the structure first, mm -hmm. connecting everything together. And before I do that, then we just need to have a game plan. We know roughly what size windows we've got here. Yep. I think I've got them still in my file, so I'll go and have a look at them. Know what I've got to do to make those openings. But that'll be basically after this first. And then this is the first thing I want to do right now is just do some connections in here so that when I jack, I don't get that beam dropping off the corner of, corner of a stud or anything like that. Because, yeah. I mean, it'll probably stay there and it's probably been nailed in and probably this and probably that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make sure, you know. She's dodgy ass, bro. It is a bit, but it's yeah. not too bad. It's got a prop under each end now, so it, it, has. Is, it seems to be a bit of meat under here. So this, this was where there was an old wall. 
Yeah. Obviously. Mm -hmm. And so there's probably a bearer line under here too, which yep. is explaining why it drops just down at that point, you know, at the yep. end. Well, currently it's Bruno's dog kennel. There's his bedding on the ground. Yep. He doesn't want to sleep in his box, so he's it's got this bedding here. So if you don't mind working around Bruno, if he's a problem, I can take him out, mate. No, he's good. Is he all right here? Because he, yeah, he's want, all right. He, he gets annoyed there. when I use my um, rattle gun and all that. Well, that'll rattle him all right. And the first yeah. thing I'm going to do is get some famous bugle back and screws into here. To the old bugle back and screws, yeah. yeah. And I'll get some plates to connect the two together and some rafters. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. That's yeah. the old fireplace that was, I've yeah, kept yeah. that. I'll yeah. take it out of your way. And, um, well, I'm going to love you and leave you. I've got some work to do, and we'll come back and show everybody where you're at yep. down the track. Cool. And really good to see you again, bro. Fun to be back. Yeah, man. Awesome. Okay. This is the waste. No trap in it. The trap would have been at the top, so that's okay. We can reuse that. That's good. How's the uh, bottom plate looking? Is it rooted? Bearer. So well, this is bearer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she's rotten, mate. Yeah. yeah. Puck a root, eh? Yep. Water going through it. Well, it's where this this was coming down. The brace was coming in. Yeah. See how it gets all. It's, a, it's like it's been water damaged at some point and it's running down the brace into the bottom. So it's actually rotted the bearer because, see, it's just been coming down. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's better out there, but you yeah. don't have to replace it. It's just, yeah, yeah. And, um, there's no pile there. <laughs> no pile? Where's the pile gone? Bits and pieces of it. So it's didn't have, oh shit, rotten. oh yeah. yeah right eh? This was just floating so the floor was just sitting there. Yeah. There's your waste pipe again. Yeah right. So I'll connect that to the pile that I put in here. Yeah right eh? And um. Geez Ab. Yeah. And the old reciprocating saw is taking all the floor out. Yeah, it's it's better than with a saw blade. Um, yeah. With a saw blade because I've got a dual purpose blade so if I hit a nail. It's yeah good. right eh? It's a, no cheaper blades than saw blades. Bloody good. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, There'll be a bearer in there as well. At least we know we can cut through this floor without it being asbestos. Yeah. Mark Rudolph's test and all that, so yeah, we're all right. good. Awesome, bro. Jesus, there's going to be a lot of replacement. I mean, you're going to be doing a lot of studs too, aren't you? Yeah. A lot of replacement studs. Yeah, yep. That'll be cool. Basically, you're going to be doing stuff just to hold the roof up, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah. there's not a lot of roof on there. It goes from that point. I've held it at that point. Yeah, right. So that's good. <laughs> You've got that held there, yeah. Yeah. So um, there's not a lot of weight on that, that's alright. It looks to me like it about there by the window, that stud's got a pretty good footing. Oh yep. Yeah. Just from the noise when I was bashing stuff just to hear how it feels. Yep. This one where they've cut it, see how it's bent right out? Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. crazy they've cut through that, isn't it? Chainsaw? Yeah, I reckon they must have done well, it. Well, you can see the holes I've drilled, but it's just yeah. ridiculous to think they've, 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 they didn't have to put it there. They could have put a vent to the side. Yeah. You know? That was for the range hood, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. Crazy. Because that, that, that's actually holding all this whole yeah, yeah, roof up. Uh, and the next one along is actually this one here, which is cut there. Yeah. So it's taking a lot of strain that. Yeah, it yeah. should be a double stud, which is what this was. Mm -hmm. You know, it was at least a bit of an attempt, you know. Yeah. And it looks like they even did a double check there. Yeah. Stop it against earthquakes. Yeah, that's been checked in quite good, but then yeah. someone's gone and buggered it. Yeah. Oh, well. The range hood was holding it together. Yeah. It was a structural range hood. <laughs> Well, the man is back. Ab. Happy days. Bro. Bro. The body's getting old, bro. <laughs> now the old left shoulder doesn't like it. Good to see you, man. Same, bro. Holy shit, you dug that pile out, you dug that pile out, yep. and you're digging this one out. Yeah, had to get rid of a lot of dirt too. It's a funny 
It's funny here because uh, the ground level is high, but it's, it was above this and it was above the waste pipe. It's almost like... The ground level was? Yeah, yeah, like it was flooded oh, really? under the house or something. With dirt? Yeah. Or they built it up with dirt when they built it. Well, well, they... you, well, you wouldn't push it in underneath the foundations or anything mm, like that, It's been but... here a lot of years, bro. You yeah, wouldn't yeah. know what's going under. So the dirt was actually up up to where? Up to here, Yeah, was well, it? It, was, it was above everything. Like So since they put this wire in, yep. this was buried under dirt. Shit. You know, which is kind of interesting. So the slab was later. Mm -hmm. So maybe the slab, they yeah. did some stuff with it. To... You can only think that water would do that, can't you? Yeah, generally, yeah. 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 But we're just about the top of the hill here, aren't we? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Eh? It drops off the side there. Yep. Long way, so. We are. Yeah. So that's that. That's a good point, actually. So how would it get in there? I yeah. have no idea, mate. Nah. I don't know. You've had Bruno with you all morning too, by looks of it. Pretty much. When I pulled out the tools, I, I put a few screws in here and there before I jacked this up. I jacked up the top because there was nothing at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I jacked up the top right. and lasered it so it's level on the top plate. Yeah. And then um, stuck screws between these studs and the top okay. plate to keep it together while I jacked it up. Yeah, I see you've put some more support for this beam up here. You put yeah. a couple of... Uh, put a bit more stuff over there because I needed to steal that acro prop out of there. So yeah, right. I so screwed it up to the studs it. and that just to make sure. Yep. So those your famous bugle batten screws in there, up. That's exactly right. <laughs> You know, bro, I've been thinking about getting myself a decent drill. After having used your one, I want to plant a lot of trees around here and using your planter. Yep. Out of everything that's on the market that would be, like, powerless, you know, that has a battery, yep. what do you think's the strongest drill I could buy? I'd say Hilti, but to be honest, you're better off to buy Makita because I reckon it's just more versatile. You can buy so much stuff running off the same battery. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like the reciprocal saw that I've got, also healthy. I use it in the garden with a gardening blade on yep. it. You know how far I have to go away from our house. Yeah. Got a bit of land, so if yep. I want to prune anything. So you want to get something that's compatible, you know? Yeah. So Makita. Makita. 18 and 36 volt stuff. Mm. Yep. And they'll do. They do a, a big screw uh, drill like that, four speed with a big long side handle. I know right. for sure they do. And it's just you put the digger in it and mm -hmm. use it on low speed. And okay. That. Good info. Yeah. To tell you the truth, there's probably not a lot of difference in price yep. when you're buying skins, but it's about batteries. Batteries about, is everything. Yeah, charges and all yep. that. And, you know, mm -hmm. and these, um, the Hilti 22 volt, 5.2 amp hour batteries aren't cheap. So the no, ones not. are cheaper. Are they? Yeah, they're probably yeah. like about another 80 bucks cheaper. And when you're going to buy, you know, quite a few of them. Yeah. And also Hilti doesn't have the wide range like Makita does. They've got this massive range of everything. You can buy a bloody battery lawnmower. Yep. Weed eater, chainsaw, you name it. Mm. And with the 36 volt stuff, it gets like my drop saw is 36 volt. Yeah, right. Two batteries. It's as good as a corded saw, but it's better because there's no cord on it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm starting to think that this floor here, you know, that the, they've almost built it on dirt. I'm all, almost starting to think because that garage out there has they've built dirt up to build that on. They've packed it up, and I'm looking at this here. Logically, I'm trying to work out how dirt got there, and the only thing I can think of is actually been put there. I I can't see that. Just as you point out, we're at the top of the hill. Yeah. If we were in a gully, water could introduce it, but I think at the top, that's the way they built it. They've actually just said, okay, we're going to pack this and build it on top so of it. So that way it doesn't flood underneath it. How did that go? The wise man built his house upon the stone? Well, they built it upon clay. So, yeah. as we know, clay's not very wise. <laughs> <laughs> hey Bruno, yeah, don't really know the whole history of this home I've been renting, but from what I've shown me this morning, I reckon that my guess is that they've, they've compacted clay down, they've built on top of it, and they've just gone, oh well, she were right. Yeah, maybe, I mean, there's no concrete around the stumps. I know, there's nothing, and when you see other things and how they've been built here, um, you know, like, geez. That fireplace, the fire? yeah, that cast in situ fireplace would be on a big slab on the ground. Yep. So they would have chopped the floor out of the original house to yep. do that bit. Same as the other one on the side of your bedroom as well. Yeah, right. Really well built, strong. They are good built fireplaces, and that's yeah. good because they're not going to go anywhere. You know, the whole yep. chimney's concrete as mm. well. So you know, you don't worry about big chimneys and earthquakes, you know, and shit like that. Yeah. So it's all big old concrete. It's been there for a hundred years probably. So you know. Well, concrete. Well, I don't know how long yeah, concrete been around for. Cement. How long cement? When did they start using cement? I could Google it right now. <laughs> <laughs> These beautiful Pekin duck eggs, they're massive. 
But look, this one here is green, and I think it comes from the smaller Pekin duck. I don't think it comes from a Muscovy duck. Check out the colour of that, it's quite green compared to the other ones. If I place one beside it, you can see the difference in colour. It's quite noticeable. And there's one in this box too. I'm getting three a day right now. I've thrown some old lettuce in just to give these guys a bit more greenery. Got some lettuce that was getting a bit uh, sort of mouldy looking, a bit wet. Didn't take them too long to work out how the automatic feeder goes. It's working really well. This is a great setup because it means I can leave them if I go hunting for a couple of days. Go away, they can still get fed. This bloke here, well it's a male, he's having a good life. He's having a great life and uh, just imagine being a duck and having like four girlfriends. He must be absolutely rooted. And the chicken mesh that I've got around the place keeps the dogs out. And they don't fly out, they could, well actually that's not true. The Muscovy duck could. I don't think the Pekins could. Reasonably tame, these guys. Not too worried about me. That's a big duck, that boy. He's massive. Currently, he's chewing on some cauliflower I chopped up into smaller bits. So he could digest. Is he going to eat that or not? I'm not sure. Looks like, uh, looks like the Muscovy duck is the boss of the whole uh, run here. She moves in, if she wants to eat something, she takes over and nobody argues. They do enjoy that lettuce, and they're getting into it. And they really like this pond that I've got going here, it's just natural. Like it's come since the rains come. I think when the uh, summer really comes and it stops raining, I might put a plastic bottom in so it stays full of water, because ducks love to have water all the time. Once these guys know this is where their feed is and where they can lay their eggs, I'm going to make a small doorway over here so they can wander through the orchard and feed and come back in and lay their eggs. I think they won't damage my vegetables too much. They tend to uh, be a bit different to chickens as much as they don't scratch everything up on the ground. They just put their beaks in where it's wet. No, you leave it. Leave it. We've never had a week here before. He came back see about oh, two weeks ago. He's back again, which is great. I don't want Bigsy to get him, so I'm going to put Bigsy in the cage because Bigsy's. Well, he is wicker proof actually. I've seen one around here, so I'm going to put him away. Come on. Good dog. Right. You stay there. So that was a wicker. Now wicker is a native wood hen to New Zealand. Very rare around these parts here. You find them more around in Nelson and that, but never, well, never been heard of in Tasman. And he's somewhere in this native bush behind the house. And I want to find him and uh, film him and show you guys. It's cool. I think he's around here. Uh, but dogs do kill them. And that's how they hunt them with dogs is in the Chatham Islands. And I've actually eaten wicker. It tastes like a mixture between chicken and wild pork. And it's nice, and I wonder if he's around here somewhere. I'm just going down the back. Got a little native bush here. I thought he might be somewhere in here. I'm standing directly underneath the tree hut, which is above me. Can't see anything. I've just spotted him. There he goes. How about that, eh? It's so awesome to see. Weka. Probably the closest thing that we've got to a Kiwi, I imagine. Just through there. It's having a bit of native bush around. There'll be stuff you can feed on here. Just down there in the scrub. There he goes. So wickers, they predate on rats and mice, which is really good because they're a bloody pain in the ass. G'day, mate. So I'd like to get another wicker. I don't know if it's a male or a female. If anybody's got any uh, small wickers that they want to uh, give to a good home, around right here would be a good place to get this guy, mate. Just down by that old trailer there. Just underneath the back wheel. Here he comes, popping out now, look. 
Hey guys. Yeah, I'd like to uh, get another week around to give him a, a mate to hang out with and maybe have some chickens. That'd be cool. There he is, just holding him there, look. There he goes. A little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Going behind those bushes. Come back out again. There we go. Come on, mate. You can't tell me he wouldn't like a bit of posse, um. I don't know if he's still down there or not. There he goes, just there. Having a good old feed in the ground, look. Getting right into there. Right behind the chicken house. What's he getting? A worm? He's not too worried about me, he's not that far away. I'll zoom out. You can see how far he is from me, just behind the chicken house. Just down there. Let's cut him a bit of this up and see if he likes it. I'm going to try and feed him a bit of this and see if we can get him a bit closer. And get him to hang around. G'day mate. G'day mate. There you go. I've got some posse on for you. Yeah. Try a bit of this, yeah, try that. Tear into it, you'll love it. There we go, try that. Don't be fussy, you can eat that. Hell yeah. That's good tucker, mate. Yeah. Bloody oath. Nah, you're laughing. You like that, don't you, eh? Have a bit more. There we go. Wrap your laughing gear around that, mate. You want some more? Come on, come and get it. That's the one. That's posse yum. That's actually the best dog tucker on the whole planet. You want some more, mate? Here we go. You come back and a bit more of that posse yum, eh? That goes on the ground. He's come back to it now, look. He's seen it. He's going, yeah, I like that. Too right. It's better than bloody worms, isn't it, eh? The good thing about posse yum is it's got everything in it. It's got a bit of liver, a bit of kidney, a bit of heart, a bit of lung. It's getting a good feed. They're actually a neat bird, the wacker. As a kid, I can remember and hanging around in Tōtoranui when my dad was a ranger there. And uh, they'd catch rats and mice and they'd even kill a stoat. Well, the stoats will also kill weckers. But of course, stoats not uh, native, so we want the stoats dead because they predate on our native species, ground nesting birds. It's good to have this guy hanging around here. Bloody good. Boy's getting a drink out of that tyre. It's a good place to get a drink in it, mate.
Where a dark soul goes 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 Who knows, who knows Well, hell and heaven might be on earth There's good and bad from your birth Right to the end of your final day Where a dog's soul goes, who can say? Bruno, Bruno, what are we going to find those two Chicos? Some fresh eggs in the front paddock, mate. Want to go have a walk? Come on, mate. Let's go for a walk, eh? Come on. Let's go and find some Fuchico eggs. Hey, mate, some chickens in. Bruno, come. Come on. Bruno, come. Come on. Good job. There's definitely some social division going on between the Muscovy duck and the Pekin ducks. They're staying separate now. Anyway, Bruno and I are going to go and see if we can find some baby Pekikos, or at least some eggs. Hey chickens, are you laying some eggs? I actually just heard then, I heard a ringneck cock pheasant crow. Did you guys hear it in the background? Anyway, you guys... I need you to lay an egg each every day because I eat four eggs a day. I'm going to have to get some more chickens. And if you don't lay eggs, well, I'll, I'll sing them a happy song to remind them what happens if they don't lay eggs. Whoa, chicken in the chicken house laying my eggs. When you stop laying, I'll chop off your head. Then you'll certainly be dead. I'll pluck and gut and cook you up So lay me eggs and hurry up What chicken in the chicken house lay my eggs If you stop laying I'll chop off your head Oh that was a merry song wasn't it? Right let's go find those Bukiko eggs Bruno Where's he gone? There you go mate, you one step ahead of me eating a bit of that bloody catnip are you? Is that what it is? Not sure. Come on, mate. Come on. Let's go. You've been eating grass, I can see it in your mouth. Hmm. 
You got some babies somewhere, mate? Hey? Where are your babies? Wouldn't be surprised. Can you guys see that hairline down the grass there? Pretty hard to see. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Close as I can get to him. Using his best defence, just staying nice and low. I can hear that wicker calling again. Just trying to find a mate. So down here there's nesting some pukeka and one of these bulrushes. There's also some paradise ducks hanging down here too somewhere. Anywhere where you've got bulrushes growing like this is a natural place for there to be some wetlands. And right now I can see a pukeka in front of me and I can see two paradise ducks. the white head just popped down and there's also the black head just sneaking away now of the male paradise duck often these bulrushes have nest right in the middle of them that's what I'm looking to see is anything down here nothing in that one the birds sneaking off plenty of food around here Pukekos, they make a lot of mess and they they get, you know, pretty bad rap pukekos. But they're actually not bad eating. And you can eat their eggs. What's in this one here? Maybe it's in this one. There goes the female over there now. She goes in the pond. Look. Oh, she's got babies. Oh, wow. Look at that. She's got babies. I didn't know there was those hatched out. How cool is that? Oh, awesome. Oh, right, I won't be bringing the dogs down here, we'll just leave those guys. That was so cool to see. Didn't know there was any. There they go. Well, they get predated on also by pukekos and hawks. And that wicker will also eat those, but these are a long way from the wicker. There's a pukeko also. Oh, it's good to see the uh, bird life down here. And look, the pukeko there. I didn't film that, I was busy watching it. Pukeko had a crack then at the babies. The mum and dad will protect it. Pukeko will eat baby ducklings. You can see this water all welling up here, coming out. These ducks aren't very happy about me coming down here, but uh, I'm not going to disturb them too much. Just want to see whether the Pukekos have hatched, the eggs have hatched. There's plenty of water here. After all the rain we've had, it's flowing. We get eels in here too sometimes. I think there's some eggs in this one here. Or maybe the mother's nesting in it right now. Or maybe her babies have even hatched. I don't know. Let's creep up slowly and have a look. I can hear something. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear a baby, I think. I think I can hear a chick. Oh, they hatched out. Oh, there's one in the nest there, look hatched out. How cool is that? They're hatching out right now. I've come at the right time. There she goes. Yeah. Where's your mum, eh? Your mates are busy hatching out now. Is that little baby just there? Yeah. So there's the, there's the eggs and there's the wee baby. These guys must be just about due to hatch out too. Hey? I'm trying to get out of your nest, mate. You gotta wait for your mates to hatch out. Little baby Pukuko. Bruno's just watching but not touching. Our mum's actually walking away from the nest trying to lead me away from it. 
Very cunning, very smart. Trying to pull me as far away from her nest as she can. Like a lion in the grass, Bruno. Come on, boy. Come on. There's a lot of water coming down. We need it anyway. Tiny little babies in the grass. There's a stream on my property. It runs off right beside the road, right next to the highway, right there. And that's where a lot of ducks and pukekos end up very flat. One little duck's got left behind. Can you see it in the long grass? The mother's calling it, but it's actually left behind. And the mother's stressing, and the little duck's not coming. It's hiding, I think. That's what they do also as part of defence, they just hide. Very hard for those little ducks to get through the grass. Very hard. Hey mate, you're miles behind. Hey, you're miles behind there. You're miles behind. You've got to keep up with the rest of your family. Hey, you won't survive you fall behind that far. Gonna keep you down there. I don't know where the rest are, but uh, this little duckling out here by itself. Pukiko or hawk get it very quick. They're way up there, and this little duckling got left behind. I'm going to try to get it back to them without scaring them if I can. Getting closer, I think the best bet's actually put it in the water. There goes his brothers and sisters there. There they all go. I'm gonna put this one down here. There we go, mate. Catch up. There you go. That's probably the best chance to catch up with the rest. Mum's way up there. Oh no, can't get up the stream. back off. It still hasn't caught up to the rest, it's still falling miles behind. Here it goes here. Mum's trying to come back to find it. She's trying to catch up. She's trying to get upstream there. The rest, there we go. Dad's seen it. Dad's seen it and he's actually coming to rescue it. Look, there we go. Now I think we're going to have a reunification here now. Gotta push upstream though. Come on, Dad. Dad's got it. It's with Dad now. Cool. So he's back with his dad. It's cool how the mother and the father look after the babies together. That's great. Babies with Dad, getting on back with Mum. Awesome. And the whole time Bruno was staying back, just waiting on the command. Good boy, Bruno. That's a good dog. Well, mum with the babies, she's got them all together. Now we're just heading upstream there. So we'll leave those guys to carry on. There's a few of them, isn't there? Good to see they're all back together again. A lot of wetlands have been taken away in my country, New Zealand. And you know, people go on about duck shooters, but I'll tell you what, duck shooters have contributed probably more to saving wetlands than those people that are against duck shooters. They put a lot of stuff in place to bring them back. And uh, I'm not shooting these ducks. The Pukikos get out of hand, I will. If they get too much, I'll have a cull and I'll eat them. Yeah, but maybe later on, you know, when those little ducklings grow up, I might take one to eat on the property. Oh, I have to date not shot any of the ducks that live here. There's enough here this water here to sustain quite a few ducklings and I was going to cut out a pond and have my own ducklings down there but looking at how nature's working just you know in the paddock there I think I'll leave it for now I could make it a little bit bigger but I think I'll just leave it because there's plenty of bulrushes and it'll be a big muddy mess if I put a digger down there now anyway with all this rain we've had and it seems to be working okay there's the hawks up there there's two of them I don't know if you can see behind me there they're circling 
and they will come down they will kill some of those ducklings that's why they have so many ducklings and that's the way they you know sort of get the balance is they have a whole lot and the hawks got to feed their babies too it's all part of nature and i know a lot of people look at it and they go oh poor ducklings but that's just part of it she's no uh nature's not pretty you know it's not like um a lot of uh children grow up thinking with everything being disney-fied uh in nature you either eat something or you get eaten and that something you eat is either this vegetation or another animal and there's no such thing as dying of old age animals in the wild don't die of old age they get killed that's in places where there is something naturally to predate on them in new zealand we have a lot of introduced species that don't get predated on we don't have wolves roaming therefore the government tends to do things like poison uh, our wild animals like deer pigs rabbits stoats rats weasels hares and to my thinking uh, I know I know the logistics of trying to kill all the animals you know keep on top but without natural predation is pretty hard but it's up to us hunters to do our bit get out there and keep numbers down because there are no wolves roaming we are the wolves when I was a boy we rented a little batch on the Robertson's farm Jim Robertson had a farm and I used to play with his kids Wayne was one of my mates and Mike also it was the twins and one thing that we used to do is we used to shoot quail with air rifle the Californian quail is introduced in New Zealand I don't know when but many years ago it's not a lot to eat but I can tell you if you cook it right it's bloody tasty we get a few on the property here another bird which is right beside there on that uh, wood pile is a blackbird I'll zoom in nothing wrong with eating one of those either when the fruit are in season they eat a lot of fruit and they get tasty the wasabi is loving this rain oh wow that's my first courgette look at that holy shit that's a beauty gonna snap that off man that's a cracker that's my first one celery in the shops is bigger i've been growing this a while it's taken a long time to get its act together nice and these here these are all yams i like a little sweet potato so what else can we have for dinner well, the watercress is loving the rain. Look at this man, it's spreading out. It's just going for it. It's doing really well. This smells really nice. You can burn this stuff. They use it for cleansing. The bees like it. It's sage, isn't it? All those beautiful herbs. And growing right inside it is parsley. And there's also rosemary and thyme. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Who did that song? Who originally did that song? The original one? Where did it come from? Well, it's only day two, and the whole pond area is a bloody mess. The grass is uh, not going to be around for much longer, is it, guys? The broccoli has been thrashed by the sparrows. You can see. Where I've got the uh, thicker wire where they can't get to it all, it's all intact, but where they can get their heads through, they've smashed it. The main thing is they haven't got to the inner part. If they get to that, then the plant's stuffed and you get no uh, broccoli to eat off it. You can even see their poo in there, look. They're sitting on top and they're eating it. It looks a little bit like baby spinach, but it's actually sorrel. I suppose it belongs to the uh, spinach family. I'm going to pick a bit of that. Very nice. You can eat it just uh, like that or you can steam it. And... Um, I'm eating it quite regularly now. So the glass house is producing a lot of food. Absolutely uh, loving what's coming out of here. Spring onions down here, plenty of them. Little tomatoes on the tomato plants there. Down here, look at that, little tomatoes in there. They'll be getting bigger. Check this out, this great big cauliflower. Look at that. One thing I know about the cauliflower is you've got to sort of harvest them before they start flowering. The last one I let get too big, so I'll probably chop that one off tomorrow. There's another smaller one down here that I planted a bit later. So behind those leaves you can see there's one inside there as well. With this broccoli I just take little bits off like that. Not the whole head. Just what I'm going to eat. Plant keeps on growing and it's nice and fresh. What I found with the strawberries in here is they grow fast but they also die fast. So you've got to harvest them. These ones are really tasty. Very sweet. 
And you guys, you taught me, you said, hey, Clay, just take the uh, spring onions, don't pull them right out of the ground, they keep on growing, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm just, like, picking the uh, ends, leaving the roots in the ground, and uh, they keep on growing. All wrapped up in a broccoli leaf, of which you can also eat. I don't know if you guys saw how I made this planter. It's made from an old bed frame, and the strawberries are actually planted in the old guttering that was on the front of the house there. The old guttering was leaking, we replaced it with copper. But we're not wasting it, we've got the old one here. And it's doing a good job of growing strawberries, and this guy probably could go a bit longer. It's going to be quite a good crop, but they're still a bit uh, green. Can't uh, start eating them yet. Well, that's actually not quite true. I have actually eaten a few, but it's going to be quite a good crop there by looks of it. Oh, oh, look at this. I didn't see those guys growing down the back there. Between the springs, they're fat ones. They're ready for taking. Okay. I think this guy's actually past his use by date. Let's put him out here. Is he alright? Is he? He's getting a bit brown. No, oh, see, we left him too long, that one. I think the ducks can enjoy that one. I got a treat for you guys strawberry. Wrap your laughing gear around that. So, Ducky's the first one there. Ducky's into it. That's a treat, eh? You don't like it, mate? Jeez, was it that rotten? Come on. Really? Wasn't that bad. You guys get fed too well. I oh, know, you'd rather eat mud. Perfectly good strawberry, okay. Not perfectly good, a little bit rotten, but you still want to eat mud. Oh, Ducky's looking at it again, going, nah. That's not me. This other massive strawberry's grown through the wire. I don't even know if I can get it out. Here we go. How's this guy look? Oops, I pulled more than I meant to. Actually, that one's not too bad. There's a keeper. It's pretty bloody good, actually. I'm not sure, but I think you can actually plant these bits out. They've got those little roots on. I don't know. We'll stick it in the ground anyway. I'm not sure that's going to actually grow or not, but hey. Nothing bench. So, I've also got this cauliflower, which is really just about past its use by date. I harvest it too late, but I'm going to cook that as well. And some shop tomatoes. Let's bring out some heat, pan, olive oil on. I've been using this stuff for a while now on meat, and it's really good. And I've smashed a bit on that. One solitary chop. Smoking hot tomato. Let's get a bit of light in the situation. Ah, that's better. Anybody hungry yet? Because I sure am. Got a nice colour. It's been in for about, I don't know, five minutes. I'm not going to overcook it. Okay, we're just going to rest that on the plate. Going to rest it there for about five minutes. A little bit of water in the pan, not too much. Just to help. Woo! Broccoli. Going for that. Courgettes. Spring onion. Olive oil. Sorrel. Well, that's my main course, and I think it's a bloody cracker. Bit of hog it and vegetables, hard to beat. It's going to rain soon, boy. You'll get wet out there. This is what I want. I want a little bit of mint. Just the tip of that plant there. Just that tip there. Good dog. You don't eat that, mate. You don't like it. No, you don't. And that is going to go onto my dessert. Just like that. Hold on, we need something. We need cream. Lots of it. There we go. I don't know why, but cream just goes so well with strawberry and a bit of mint. Mm. It's funny, you know, when I was a kid, some vegetables I just didn't like eating, but my mum made me eat everything. I'm so glad she did, because today there's virtually nothing I don't like. I mean, cauliflower was never a favourite back then, but today, especially growing mine, I love it. And you grow it yourself. But sweeter. And you really enjoy it. Oh, that broccoli. Quite different to the stuff in the shops. Don't know what it is. It's got a more earthy flavour. Mmm. How's the lamb? Pink. Is that how you guys like your lamb? Slightly pink, or do you like it well done? Mmm. Delicious. 
my own courgettes, this is the first time I've tried them. Every student should have a, a courgette plant. I tried to get one to my daughter, Dana. You know, you only need a sort of a pot that big and make sure it's got plenty of fertiliser in it. That plant will produce courgette after courgette and there's all your greens paid for. So every meal you've got something, you know. Okay, you need more greens than just that, but it, it will help. It goes a long way and it will feed you. So that was my dinner today. Uh, I'm going to get through this pretty quick, so I'll stop talking because I don't want to be a pig while I'm talking to you guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time to follow me in my day. I hope you enjoyed what I showed you and it was of interest to you. Let me know below, just comment if there's anything you think that's uh, around here in my vicinity where I live that I could be showing you that I'm missing out on. You might be seeing something that I take for granted and you might want to know more about it. So if there's anything in my video like that, just let me know and I'll show it to you. Be good, can't be good, be careful. I'll see you in the next video. Mm.